Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Smell McGee. Let me know if you can hear me. I think I have the sound quality figured out with the headphones, but I thought I would give you all an update on my second opinion pulmonology appointment. <coughs> Excuse me. As you know, I have been deeply struggling with my lungs for like months. I'm now on oxygen with exertion. And at nighttime, and with my pulmonary team, they're a great set of doctors, but with corona, they aren't seeing patients in person, and it's made it really hard to progress on my case. And my lungs have been slowly on the, not so slowly on the decline, to be honest. It's been really scary, because they just keep on getting worse, they keep on getting more short of breath, more sick feeling, and I just, I had the strongest feeling that I needed to see my pulmonologist from way back when I was in high school. And I didn't know if it was just one of those feelings you should ignore or not, but I talked with a good friend of mine and she like she also has uh, connective tissue disease and she knows a lot more than I do. And she expressed some of the same concerns that I had, even more concerns that I didn't know about. And she felt like it'd be a really good idea to like see a new doctor too. So I really, really prayed about it. And as you guys saw, I basically got like a sign that was like, yes, go see this doctor. So I went and saw him today and oh, the appointment went so well. When you're here, press the like button, tell me hello, let me know how you're doing, that you're here, etc. I hope you guys like these live updates. It's just a little easier when I'm really tired. And as you can tell by my eyes, I am very tired. But let's be honest, my eyes always look like this. But anyway, this appointment. I was ready to just plead my case, like, be like, please, 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 please help me. Because, again, this pulmonology team, they're like, oh, we don't really know what's wrong. We just know your oxygen's dropping. But we have found a cyst in my lungs, a little bit of scarring, a borderline DLCO, like, a lot of things that can point to a lot of different problems. And this doctor just hopped on right away, asked a bunch of questions, got a lot of my old records, and he was amazing. So number one, you guys know how the past couple of weeks it has hurt so bad to breathe, like so freaking bad to breathe. He was able to evaluate me and he pressed on one of my ribs and it just killed. And he's like, you know what, I bet you have slipping rib syndrome. And I'm like, slipping rib one now? You know? And he's like, yeah, um, I think it's more common with people with connective tissue disorders, but basically... Your bottom rib, kind of like a floater rib, just slides out of place. So go to a chiropractor, get this put into place, and I bet breathing will hurt a lot less. Amazing, right? So if you live by me and know a good chiropractor or a doctor who practices chiropractic, let me know. I've never been to one. But hopefully it will hurt a lot less to breathe soon. And I told him about the cyst in my lungs, the pain I've had of breathing, the... <laughs> frequent shortness of breath and just how hard it's been and looking over my records he's like well there's honestly no doubt that you have an interstitial lung disease and interstitial lung disease is a disease that causes cysts in your lungs and he's like it's no doubt with how your uh, stats look your oxygen dropping and these cysts in your lungs like I remember these cysts in your lungs because they were so weird it is an interstitial lung disease. The key is finding out which interstitial lung disease it is. There are um, a couple different um, interstitial lung diseases that can be comorbidities of connective tissue diseases. So I think it would be good in the future and probably the near future to do a lung biopsy, but not like my old pulmonology team wanted, just kind of a shot in the dark lung biopsy. He wants to biopsy the cyst so we can diagnose what connective tissue disease it is. Not just a shot in the dark, hope we find something lung biopsy, but let's like biopsy what we already have and see what it is so we know how to treat it. And literally when he said that, there was this peace. I'm like, I swear I could hear an angel choir singing in the background. You know those moments where you were just like confirmation that you are where God wants you to be in that moment. Like, it was a complete and utter sign that I needed to go to him. Like, it was amazing. So, he wants to figure out which interstitial lung disease I have so we can properly treat it. And he actually listened to my lungs. My lung doctor actually listened to my lungs. Like, how cool is that? <laughs> he says, 
my lungs are just like crazy tight right now. So he believe he knows my asthma is like way off whack. So he wants to start me on this new asthma medication called Dupixit, I believe. And it's an injectable asthma medication that's kind of newer, I guess. And that reduces inflammation in asthma patients. So the shot twice a month is supposed to stop the inflammation that causes asthma. I didn't even know this was a thing. He's like, yeah, your lungs are bad enough. Your stats suck, you know. With all that's going on, I don't think I'll have any problem getting you on this medication. And I believe it could be a big help. He also wants to add um, two allergy medications because my allergies always struggle this time of year, like harvesty season. I don't know, like fall is my worst allergy time, so he wants to add to that too. But he's like, I believe we need to get your asthma under control and it'll hopefully get your quality of life a little better. And you definitely have asthma, but back in high school, we thought asthma was the main thing. And it is definitely not the main thing you have going on. You have some sort of interstitial lung disease, maybe something com like that's connected with your connective tissue disorder going on with your lungs. And we need to figure out what this is to make you feel a lot better. Like, it was awesome. Like, it was so awesome. I felt heard and listened to. And he's the nicest guy anyway. But it's like all of my issues were addressed and heard. And as... God, I feel like I'm getting emotional. But when you can feel your health declining and slipping and people just aren't listening and aren't addressing those concerns and you feel like this stupid kid, like, it means more than anything to just have a doctor listen. Like, the simple human act of decency is, like, listening and really addressing the problem. And that everything and having them be able to listen to my lungs and be like, yes, your lungs are sucking right now. Like, the validation... I know that's really dumb, but the validation that I'm not being a wimp about all this, I met everything, like, oh, oh my heck. And you guys know that I always have this juicy little bugger in my throat, makes my neck real pretty. He like, stared at my thyroid and he's like, has anyone been like paying attention to your thyroid? I'm like, no. <laughs> like my primary care always says it's swollen, but when I go see other people, they don't really care about it. So I had testing done like a couple years ago, but besides that, nothing much. And he's like, oh, no, I don't like that. We're, I'm sending an order to your local hospital for a thyroid ultrasound, and I'm doing a thyroid panel on you to make sure your thyroid's actually working. And I want to do a CBC to see where I'm with that, and I want to check this other thing. It's like a blood test you have to get before you start those asthma shots. He was so thorough and so good. I don't think I'm... Oh. He wants to, um, at near the end of November, he wants to do a repeat PFT to see if my lungs are declining in function or remaining about the same. And yeah, he wants me on absolutely no inhalers for that, which will be really good. And he wants to see me again at the beginning of December to get a game plan. So hopeful, right? Like knowing that, okay, like these cysts aren't normal. It is an interstitial lung disease. Like... That's so comforting, and having him try, you know, like, trying this new asthma bed, knowing that my asthma is bad right now, because I haven't even been taking my rescue inhaler, because I know that sounds really dumb, but I'm like, okay, is this asthma, is this something else, like, do I take the inhaler, do I don't take the inhaler, what the heck do I do? He addressed every single concern. Like, I just prayed and prayed for hope during that appointment, and hope is what I felt. Like, he's not going to give up. He's not going to, I'm sorry, be like my current team and be like, oh, maybe we should send you to the Mayo when, oh, you guys know the Mayo was just awful for me. So I like never, ever, 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 ever want to go back to the Mayo, you know, like I don't recommend the Mayo ever. I know some people have had success with it, but my experience was horrible. So uh, that is my full pulmonology update. Let's see, we are starting a new asthma medication. My rib is out of place, so we got to figure out how to put that back in. We are starting a new um, allergy medications, repeat PFTs. He is getting all of my information from the other doctor, so he can have the full wide look at things. We're coming up with a new game plan in the beginning of September. Oh, December. <coughs> pa most likely, like... 98% of biopsy in the future to biopsy assist and see which interstitial lung disease this is 
and right now it's just kind of about management and finding the best quality of life until we can figure stuff out and this whole thing was just mad mad proof to me that prayers are answered and I'm so grateful and it's been the greatest day oh and a really cool part of my day I went to go buy a new belt at Walmart and I just kind of let Brooklyn pick it out and I'm like, oh, it's cute. It has a lot of holes. It's sparkly. I'll go for it. It's only like 10 bucks, you know. I go to the checkout. It's at $2.50. I checked with the guy in charge of the self-checkout just to make sure I wasn't, like, ripping Walmart off. I know that's weird, but, like, honesty is really important to me. So I asked him, and he's like, it says two fifty. You get it for two fifty. So I saved, like, no, I can't even math. Like, seven, seven-ish dollars? <laughs> nah, you guys see math. This is a struggle for me. Oh, and I forgot another part with uh, my CPAP. He is a little unsure about it. Like, he kind of seemed unsure about the um, quality of a sleep test done at home. And he said something about, like, if your oxygen goes down with exertion, there is a high chance that a CPAP will make your oxygen go down when you sleep. That's interesting, right? He is a pulmonologist and a sleep specialist. So I can kill two birds in one stone with that guy. And he wants to get all my CPAP information so he can see what my lungs are actually doing at night. Because you guys know I haven't felt secure with the sleep team I have, like, at all. Especially after she called me fat for, like, an hour. I mean, I got prednisone puff. I would admit it, but that is just mean. You know? Like, don't call me out like that, home size. I'm like, BMI's crap anyway. My BMI's not even really that much of us. <laughs> anyway... I, you know, I've tried to keep all my doctors in the same system, hoping that it can lead to more answers, and, uh, today it's just kind of proof that I don't need to do that. It's crazy, it might sound crazy to y'all, but it's about, like, the quality of the doctors, and now I just gotta make sure that, like, my important doctors, like my rheumatologist and primary care and GI, they need, um, lung information, they can just get it from the office that's close to my house, it's only an hour away instead of three hours away. So I just, I know he's the doctor I'm supposed to see right now. I know he's supposed to be in charge of my lungs. And I have a feeling he's going to get my, well, at least lung-wise, for me to have the best health I can in my situation. I mean, I don't think interstitial lung diseases just go away. But maybe we can get it where I'm not winded walking to the bathroom. You know what I mean? Like, that'd be really nice. Breathing has just been so hard lately. And he was so validating and so helpful and just such a blessing. I feel so freaking blessed. So thank you guys all for those prayers, for this appointment. They worked. They worked 10,000%. Like, I am so freaking grateful. So I'm going to end this live update right here. If you have any questions, please comment below. And I love talking with you guys, so I just want to do a live sometime where you can just talk. If you'd be interested in that, let me know too. Press that like button for a successful appointment like i think that deserves a lot of likes because holy cow i am feeling hope i think i don't know i'll probably never have great lungs but maybe things can and will get better is that crazy to say that's crazy to say right it's just it's hard thinking about the future in a body like mine but this gives me again the theme of tonight is hope so thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like, follow, comment, subscribe, all the things. Remember, the more you interact with any of my posts, the more of my stuff you will see. Thank you for the prayers. Please keep them coming. Uh, my next appointment is IVIG on Friday. And he believes that my lungs should be in an okay place to get my scope of colonoscopy um, on the 18th, so I'd love some praise for that, so hopefully I don't end up in the ICU again, that still really scares me. <laughs> again, thank you for the love, thank you for the prayers, stay strong, have hope, and as always, smile on. And